We'll read from the book of Jeremiah. From first chapter and verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Ananoth and the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am all ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a bowling pot, and it is facing away from the north. And the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come, and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness, because they have forsaken me, burned incense to other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Amen. Jeremiah the prophet, a man whose name means that the Lord will exalt him. He is a man that God um, wanted because the Lord has times and seasons in his hands. And God desired for him to be born in a bad period for the people of Israel and to live in bad times back at that time because people abandoned the Lord and their God. They burned incense to other gods and they worshipped the works of their own hands. This is a man for whom God, before the creation of the world, had appointed a work that is unique, I may, may I say, um, that was painful and without any fruition. Without bringing any fruition. People wouldn't listen to him, though God were, uh, speaks with his mouth. And they won't listen to him not only once, but continually. Though God is and he will be strong with him. And Jeremiah will be strong in the name of the Lord his God. He is a man that indeed preached judgment, repentance, 
He preached for over 40 years, but without any result. This is unbelievable, but it's true. And he came to the point to bring out of his mouth this unique uh, word, having the knowledge because of his failures. And he said with knowledge, he cried out and said to God, Lord, eventually save us so that we may be saved. Turn us back so that we may return. Because if you do not act, then no one and nothing, even your word, cannot work and act in this people. Return us less, we return back. And everything started when Jeremiah, without knowing nothing, and his family were priests, and he had a unique visit of God. Though he was in a small age, in a young age, and he told him things that were true. And he told me, he told him that before I formed you in the womb of your mother, you came from a will of a husband, of a man and a woman, but I formed you and the womb of your mother and before I formed you I knew you I knew you very well who you were and what you would do before you were even born from the womb I sanctified you and before even you came out from the womb I ordained you a prophet a strong prophet I saw your heart I saw your life I saw your environment and I saw everything and I chose you and I chose you so that I may send you and you to go wherever I tell you I send you I chose you so that you may speak only and all the things that I tell you but take heed of one thing take heed of one thing do not be afraid do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because then who will come to you that he says, Who is blind but my servant? And who is deaf than my messenger? Don't be afraid. Don't hesitate that I will dismay you. I will always be with you and I will deliver you. I won't keep you so that nothing will happen but from all the things that will come before you I will deliver you this is a great thing brethren God to deliver us from anything that he schedules the enemy of our soul people are influenced from the enemy of our soul so he had this characteristic and Jeremiah had this from God that I will deliver you so do not say that I am a child that I am small and do not know how to speak do not look your weakness but look to my power and hear my promises hear my word carefully from all the situations that you won't be able to deliver yourself because they're gonna be difficult I will deliver you and Jeremiah heard this and his heart accepted it so that he could he could con God could continue his work in his life now the crucial point is for him to hear to believe and to accept the Word of God and his promises he heard he believed and he accepted the word of God and the promises and for this reason now God stretched out his hand he touched his mouth God himself did this and he tells him now I have behold I have set you on nations and kingdoms and I give you authority to root out and to pull out to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant why because I have set my words in your mouth 
I have said a prophetic word, mine and your mouth. The beginning is the promise and the acceptance of this promise. What follows is the work of God with a prophetic word in a man's life. This is not a simple thing for God to touch your mouth and give you words of faith, of power, words of the Holy Spirit. And God does this when He sees someone to go well, and He wants us to go well. With the word that He gave Him, He gave Him authority also, and with the authority that He gave Him, He gave Him His word. And now what will continue is that He will give Him revelations and visions. What do you see? For the first time Jeremiah sees a vision and, sa and he says that I saw a branch of an almond tree. And God explained that I'm ready to perform my word. That's what it means, the branch of an almond tree, that I will not delay I will do it quickly. And again he says to him, What do you see? And he said, I see a bowling pot and it is facing away from the north. Now, this was the second vision. He gave him the promise, the prophetic word. He gave him revelations for the future things. I see a bowling pot. Do you know what it means? I will tell you. A great evil will come. Evil times will come in Jerusalem and the people of Judah. People won't make it. But you be careful. You have to make it. Don't grow weary. I will bring this Calamity because people are living in complete sin and idolatry and I will deliver them to the hands of their enemies. But you receive strength and be brave. Gird yourself, gird your waist and say unto them all the things that I am giving you to say. Do not hesitate. Do not be afraid this lay that lest I dismay you because I have set you as a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against all the land I repeat the course of things which may continue, but it may also be cut off. God chooses. He promises. He gives the prophetic word of power and of faith. He reveals. He reveals the future things which are difficult for that time. And they were especially difficult and with calamity, but he promises that you, I won't let you to be dismayed. Why? Because I have set you on a city that is laid on a mountain so that it may be seen and the voice of the Holy Spirit may be heard so that my glory may be manifested in my power. And I have set you to a city that is not without strength, but is a fortified city, and iron pillar, and bronze walls. That's what he wants to make Jeremiah. And take heed that he says these things in the 13th year of the kingdom of Josiah, which reigned for 38 years. Which was a kingdom, a kingship that was very good, and people increased. And he said all these things in a wealthy period. 
before even the calamity would uh, had come. He told him these things since he was a small child, the things that he would live. How old could he be back at that time? 15 years old, 20 years old, or 12 years old, plus 18? Now, after 18 years, after his 30, 35 years of age starts this evil, but he had these promises. He had this prophetic word. He had these visions and revelations. The authority to destroy and to build, to root out and to pull down, he had them. He had this authority. He had the power of the Holy Spirit. He had made him, he had set him a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against everyone. And the promise was that I will not leave you nor abandon you. Take heed that they will, they will war against you. And today our battle is not against people, but is against the ruler of darkness that influences people. And he stirs them up and he makes them angry. They will come against you. But do not be afraid. Do not grow weary. Continue. Because I, the Lord, will be with you. And where you won't be able to deliver yourself, I will deliver you. And this is the message, brethren. I will deliver you. Only the Lord will deliver you, but you do not be afraid and not be coward. He has known us before the creation of the world so that we may be holy through love. He has called us. He has saved us. He has added us to His church. He has baptized us in the Holy Spirit. And He gave us His word to dwell richly within us. He made grace into our lives. He revealed to us the future things to come. The things that are happening, if you hear the words 20 years ago, the prophetic word prophesies them. I remember that I, I was saying that a time will come that they will sell stores without any cost and people won't be able to buy because they won't have money and they will close. Of course, I couldn't consider the things that would come, how bad they would be. I couldn't imagine when the Word of God was writing about evil times how bad they would be. And even now, we don't know anything. Situations are coming that cannot be controlled, not just for Greece. Greece is a small part of the world. And the Middle East, it's a great, it's happening a great bowling. The Muslims, the fanatic Muslims rule everywhere. And someone said that the capital of Muslims, uh, a president that has great power, will become Jerusalem and everyone I've lost it with Syria situations that cannot be controlled are coming but you Jeremiah that God has promised you that he will exalt you, you my brother and my sister be careful do not be afraid God will be with you to deliver you if you accept his promises the promises of God if you accept the word of the power of God, and especially if you are not afraid, if you do not grow weary, about uh, m many months ago God told me, and I'm saying this again, whoever will make it, he will finish.
the way, but not all of us will be able to do this. But I want all of us to make it all the way. And this is not the financial issue, this is a spiritual issue. We have made a decision, and that is to endure till the end and go to heaven. Help us, Lord. We're not pretending to be brave men. We do not claim that we have power. On the contrary, we boast in our weaknesses. But again, we trust in the word of God that says that I will deliver you. When you won't be able to do anything, I will deliver you. The only thing you have to do is not to be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you power. Because I need your ministry, your service. I need you for my work, for my glory. There has to be someone who will exalt the truth of the gospel. There has to be someone who will remain. And the strongholds of the Lord, of the work of God, there is someone who has to endure, to suffer, and someone to hope. There has to be someone that will be found faithful to the Lord. May all of us be in this way, brethren. May God help us. May God help us, because none of us by himself can make it. Because situations that cannot be controlled will happen in a personal, in a family, in the church, fa uh, church level will happen. Our strength is being tested, which do not exist, but in reality, what, what is being tested is our faith. Amen.